How nice of you to join me today. This here chart, um, it's about 25 years old and uh, it charts different progressions um, through history of different civilizations from whence we first emerged out of caves. But that's not what we will be talking about, will we? <clears throat> Albeit, here it says, mark well, the evils and tragedies of this world are not of our God's design. Any more than are any of the acts of nature. God is not to blame for the rescuer not being there when needed. That is something different. God is the light in the heart of the faithful and that light is not but a mirror of the reflection at the end of the tunnel of the journey of our life together and them of us whom do not keep our hearts on that light at the end of the tunnel wherewith of you then eh what God the Creator transcends universal nature yet Satan rules the human heart and that is the whole of the subject of the book of Job if you give too much over to the fact that all these natural disasters befall he then you completely miss the entirety of the meaning of the story of album called Job and Job in this context is a reflection of Christ our Lord in the wilderness tempted so by the devil. The accuser cometh up upon him as the accuser did so um, uh, with Job. Anyhow, that's that and that's not us. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about stories of our ancestors. And those were just a couple of scribbles on a page I have here where where I tried to uh, <clears throat> uh, understand whom I am in accordance to whom my ancestors were and of course we see here the uh, Quebecois the Acadians, the uh, Quebecois Trois-Rivières, Montreal, Quebec uh, Michel Mackinac, Detroit, that was probably both of them, mixed settlements, uh, Americans and Canadians, or Québécois. The Français de la Paz de Huronia, the Pembina Turtle Mountain Red River Metis folk, and all the mothers, uh, including our American Plains ancestors whom we might term uh, um, buffalo hunters and mountain men. Of note here it stands out are the Caracan Salier. 
So there's about 30 different uh, Indian tribes or First Nation tribes that I myself have a direct bloodline through. Um, to it, most notable are the Abenaki and the Mi'kmaq. This is just a jumble. There's, there's no sense to it at all. Uh, both Dataconda and uh, um, Matawaka come to mind. Um, Matawakonda and Danaconda. Also listed here are the Montagne and Inu and the, the Penobscot, the Minomi and the Ojibwe. Uh, Fort Williams Ojibwe are also noted. The um, Iroquois, the Malasite, the Illinois and Anishabi, the Miami, the Potawatomi. I'm pretty sure I have not any Shawnee or uh, Delaware bloodline. Um, but I, I do know I have Dakota Sioux, uh, the Fox and the Souk, the Winnebago, um, a Snare Iroquois of uh, Snake Indian River. The Mitis family of uh, uh, Grand Cash, um, them of the Upper Athabasca region in uh, the Central Jasper National Park area, uh, other voyageurs, Crow, Gros Ventra. Uh, so, you know, that's not just me alone. That's all of us. Each of us is a little bit different than all the others. And uh, I, I just I just love hearing all the stories I find. What we need to do is we need to establish our creed and uh, um, create um, um, a codex or a collection of our statutes and uh, other legislature involved in the uh, um, <coughs> excuse me laying a foundation for the furtherance of our doctrine um, the basic tenets and uh, etc involved in in whom we are as what we are uh, we've always been like that right from the beginning um, when men like uh, Louis Hébert and Abraham Martin de Lacosis and Robert Cafard on Henri Pingu, um, uh, uh, Pierre Delaunay, Vincent Poirier, um, all these all these people, some of them were killed by Iroquois, you know. Uh, the Iroquois didn't really uh, uh, welcome newcomers. Um, and the Huron who did were, and were Christianized, were massacred. There's none left. In 1634, uh, um, there's a note here concerning uh, uh, Quebecois de Orléans. And another note at 1642 for Trois-Rivières in Montreal. Um, in 1634, there were about a hundred colonists in Canada, mostly Quebec. In 1666 there were nearly uh, 6,900, so that's uh, because of the Caracas Salier, the Fideroy, and the Grand Recru when they brought in a whole bunch of people after the Iroquois were settled to uh, people, uh, say, Montreal and beyond. In 1671 the King's Daughters, uh, Jean Talon, the Jesuit influence, French Roman Catholic authorities passed laws regulating an increase of uh, native born children. They were no more uh, mixing with the Indians. Hey, eh? you get together with the other Quebecois girls, the French girls, and let's people this colony. That's what you're here for. Um, this 
only added and fueled the child bride phenomenon um, which included many of the filles of Marier, uh, filles de Roy, um, and huge families all through Quebec uh, to Louisiana and beyond the Rockies have been accredited onto these darling children, these young girls, uh, 12, 13, when they signed their marriage contracts. Um, and as soon as they're able, you know, a lot of these uh, girls start dropping their babies. And I've had visions of uh, these poor girls on their knees in the snow, under the moonlight, in the forest alone, scratching a hole in the snow, eh, to bury their 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 child their 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 stillborn children with wolf's eyes gleaming in the dark of the night. So, you know, just uh, another immigrant, eh? Now we looked at this chart yesterday. And, and that's orange. That's an orange mark. Um, I wanted to talk about the Crest family and didn't. That's why I brought it out again today. So, at the top here we see Jean Crest de Crete, the husband of Marguerite Chaudon, were the parents of Antoine Crest de Crete, whom took to wife Jean Legrand, the daughter of Suzanne Loiseau and Noel Legrand, and their son Jean Crest de Crete. Married Marguerite Gaulin, the daughter of Marie Bonmer and Vincent Gaulin. And their daughter, Madeleine Crest de Crete, wed Robert Pierre Pepin de la Chance, son of Jean Pepin de la Chance and Jean Dumont. Their son, Robert Pepin did Le Chance took for a wife Elizabeth Isabel Royer, the sister of Jean Royer, the husband of Catherine Marguerite Dumont de Le Fleur, daughter of Catherine Thompson and Carrington Salier, Julian Dumont de Le Fleur. Uh, C. Maximi, the son of Jacques Dumont de la Fleur, and Marie Maubert. And they were the parents of Suzanne Royer, the second wife of Etienne Desbien, and we talked to them. But we did not spend the time I wanted discussing the um, Cret or the Crete family. And I see here that we're not going to get much more into it now. I have a very limited attention span since I um, since I was hit in the head. Uh, I have no control really over what comes and goes in my mind, in my thoughts. And I assure you that I have had countless uh, hallucinogenic experiences under a lot of different circumstances and as 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 said here you know I I'm I'm not I'm, I'm not an adept at uh, at, at the study of uh, said uh, at, at the kind of thinking that Nostradamus might do, eh? It also comes with being uh, a strong limitus and having the deep roots in the soil of Canada, so to speak, uh, even on to 
having an maternal root not so much born in the Ukraine, but very much associated with um, the Zenian tradition involved in the daughters of mitochondrial Eve. Uh, herewith I am inferring a circle reunited in those peasants in sheepskin clothing blocked over by Baron Maurice von Hirsch and the North Atlantic Trade Company together. And to people, the, uh, the, the, the plains here in uh, North America, Canada. Now, Hirsch was the builder of the Orient Express. Agatha Christie wrote a book about it. And it ran from Constantinople, although it connected with ports beyond in, in Muslim uh, Middle East, and it attended to uh, Budapest and Hamburg and other points um, in between en route to uh, Perry where he had a ship line and the Canadian government had sent folk to Eastern Europe with flyers and promises inducing them first sheepskin peasants to pioneer the stolen lands. And many of these Eastern European families were broken up in London. Some were sent to South America and others to Ellis Island, wherewith they were scattered through North America, uh, the United States and Canada. So that's, that, that's a very important story to know that nobody knows about. And I only found out about it because in researching different lineages and different stories, it, it kind of emerged of its own, say, through a mist. You see here, Michel Leneuf is the father of Anne Leneuf de Harrison. No, she's the uh, granddaughter, albeit, I guess she could be the daughter of Michel Leneuf. Certainly she is the daughter of Michel Leneuf de Heraison, 1601 France to 1672 Trois Rivières, and his wife Jean La Marchand, 1610 France to 1642 Quebec Trois Rivières of Cain Normandy. The brother of Michel Leneuf de Harrison was Jacques Leneuf de la Potterie, the husband of Marguerite Lagardier. And that is a very much incredible uh, family in the Canadian tradition that we should uh, all be appreciative of and pay a little bit more attention to and maybe look it up. I can only tell stories that you don't know and hope that you are induced to, on your own, um, say, look up Canadian biographies or uh, Red River Ascendancy Chart. Richard Leneuf de la Poterie the son of Jean Leneuf, the son of Richard Leneuf de Garden, an advocate, and his wife Jeannette de 
Manary of Can Calvados Normandy took him to wife Jean Bellot and sired Jean Le Neuf Le Hain, which uh, means wool. Um, and he took to wife Cardin de Longui or Longai. And their son was Ecuyer Jacques Leneuf, who married Francois uh, Plainpel. And their son was Jean Leneuf, who married Marguerite Lacien. And their son Jacques Leneuf was Procureur du Roy dans la juridiction de Havre. Um, That sounds like a very uh, uh, important position to have because you could grow wealthy in a position like that, and many men did um, procuring for the king's stables, for the king's servants, for the king, for the king's army. We see here that uh, Richard Leneuf de la Patrie and Jean Bellard also uh, were the parents of Pierre Leneuf, Sieur de Venois et Montenay, Lieutenant du Vicomte de Caen, Juge de Causes Menier. I know not what that means. Uh, judge, though, and perhaps judge of small matters, I don't know. De causes menirs. Menirs. Pierre Leneuf, Sire de la Venois et Montenay, married Catherine Le Boucher, their son Pierre Leneuf, uh, Le Sire de Venois Montenay et Courtonnet married Marie de la Roque, Marie de la Roque, and their son was Ecuyer Antoine Le Neuf, Sieur de Vendois Montenay et Courtonnet, and his wife was Marguerite de Hollandel. We see here. Two children listed, Pierre Leneuf, of not said more, and his elder brother, Francois Leneuf, Sieur de Sorduel, Venois et Montagné, who married Marguerite de La Frenac, and their son, Gabriel Leneuf, married Louise Marie de Noyer, and their son, Louis Bernardin Le Neuf was a naval officer and a chevalier de l'ordre or Saint Louis. Um, and his wife was Marie Jean. And he was guillotined. So Another son listed here, uh, Richard Leneuf de la Pottery and Jean Belot, was Jean Lejeune Leneuf, who took to wife Marguerite Lagardeur. They also have two sons listed, uh, Jean Leneuf, who married Suzanne Blanchard, and Matthew Leneuf de Harrison, Ecuyer Prata. And they are an important family. They were at the top of the food chain, I guess you might say, as concerns 
the Quebecois, although the gentleman Louis Bernard Le Neuf, whom was guillotined, was no doubt guillotined in France during the French Revolution. Uh, the edit saith that not. Uh, otherwise, the names Cartier Guillaume Crest are listed along with Radisson, Grosselier, Champlain, Giffard, Eucolo, and Boucher. So that's kind of that family, or that part of our family. Now I'm going to talk about a little bit here uh, the Great Puritan Migration. We're going to go back a bit in time and uh, begin with uh, John Pesson, husband of Margaret Everett of England, and their son John Pesson, a.k.a. Pesang, and his wife Elizabeth Selman, the daughter of John Selman Denby Derbyshire. Sus. Their son Richard Pai Singh married Marjorie, and their daughter Joan Pesson, Pai Singh Pison, was the wife of Thomas the Younger Hull, son of Richard Hull and Alice of Crew Kearney, Somerset, England. Thomas Hall the Younger was the father of Reverend Joseph Hull of the West Sussaget, the West Sagasset Colony. And his daughter was Elizabeth Hull, a heroine, for during one unprovoked cruel massacre of Indians by whites. She saved a young First Nation, concealing him in her dress until the would-be slayers left her home. This story is very reminiscent of how Almighty Voice was reduced to hands and knees as a footstool whereupon his grandmother sat with her skirts around him that the Northwest Mounted Police might not find him after they searched her cabin looking for him. But this is not his story. Twelve years later she fell into the hands of savages but was enabled to escape because of that same young Indian boy. Isn't that a beautiful story? That's a true story of our heritage, both First Nations and here Anglo, Puritan. Elizabeth Hull, our heroine, the daughter of Reverend Joseph Hull, of West Agassat Colony was Sea Captain John Hurd of Kitney and Dover. And both he and his wife and their son, no, the son was born in Dover Colony or lived in, Benjamin Hurd lived in Dover Colony. John Hurd of Kitney and Dover and Elizabeth Hall were members of the Massachusetts Bay Colony. John Hurd of Kitney and Dover was the son of Luke Hurd and Sarah Wyatt of Newbury and Salisbury, Connecticut. Also on this page is a little concerning the wife of Benjamin Hurd, 
the son of Sea Captain John Hurd of Kitney and Dover. Her B. Elizabeth Roberts, the daughter of Rebecca Hilton and Thomas Roberts Sr. of the London Fishmongers Guild, son of John Roberts, son of Thomas Roberts of England. The daughter of Benjamin Hurd and Elizabeth Roberts was Anne Hurd. Her uh, was present at the Candlemas Massacre in York, Maine. Her husband, Sebastian Cholet de la Volée, de la Violette, Sebastian Cholet de la Violette, husband of Anne Hurd, was son of Sebastian Cholet, son of Sebastian Cholet, a.k.a. Cholet. And the wife of Sebastian Cholet, Perrine Hillier, or Hilaire. So, it's always nice to look at uh, um, something a little different than just the uh, Quebecois and Miyakitas families. On the uh, Verso side, we see the name Perrin Hilaire, or Hillary, circled. Her killed 1684 July 7th. And René Cholet, her son, is also listed as having died 18, 1684, July 6th. But it saith not what or no why. Now, Perrin Hilaire, Hilary, was the daughter of Nicole Bansereau, the daughter of Louise Pibard, and René. Blanchereau and the father of Perrin Hilaire, Hilary, was Toussaint Hilaire, the son of Michel Hilaire and Thianet Ragrao, the son of Jean Hilaire, and Guillaume Dutour, a Le Void, Marne et Loire, Pays de la Loire. De, de la loi, le void, man et loi, pays de la loi. Wait till we get into some of those really interesting French names that you could just seemingly never ending. <laughs> They're wonderful. I love them. Um, now. Four children are listed here, desired by Sebastian Cholet, son of Sebastian Cholet Cholet, mother of Perrin Hilaire Hilary. Pierre Cholet, of which nothing is known. Mathurin Cholet, 1675 March 17th to 1678 August 9th, died age three. The youngest was René Cholet, we've mentioned him dying with his mother in July 1684. But also listed is Sebastien Bastien Cholet de la Voyolette, the husband of Anne Heard Prevot, whom later married Clon Saint-Sort de Petit Recalc. And I believe they may be um, uh, in my genealogical tree, and I'm not sure. And heard uh, Prevol, her name comes to mind. A very simple chart to look at now, involving uh, the, the Cavalier family. We see here Henri Cavalier and his brother Jean Cavalier, a wholesale haberdasher. 
uh, born about 1606 and died about 1666, having married Catherine Jest, the daughter of Catherine de la Salle and Robert Jest, were the parents of uh, four children listed here. The first Abbe Jean Cavalier, born 1636-1027, Rune Cien Martin, Upper Normandy, France, died 1722-1124 at age 40. Him was a Sulpatian priest. Catherine Cavalier, born 1638. The Youngest here is a lawyer, Nicolas Cavalier, born 1645. Youngest here is a lawyer, Nicolas Cavalier, born 1645, whom seems to be sired or may have sired the child of an unknown sister. The child called Creval de Moranger, born 1687. We see here Nicolas Cavalier, born 1645, was the husband of Marie Gisette Fauvel, the daughter of Marie de Montfort, born 1620, and Nicolas Fauvel Esquire. Two children were born, seeming of the union of Nicolas Cavalier and Marie Gisart Fauvel. The first, Colin Cavalier, born 1674, Ruben Saint Martin, uh, uh, France, and his younger brother Jean Cavalier. Now, we don't see any, any continuance here with of any of these names. Perhaps I was just exploring for off times in doing research. I don't take things for granted as they are and explore unknown lines much so. Um, something of which ancestor Pierre Fiddler may have done him having learned from David Thompson how to survey and make maps. No one taught me nothing. Jacques Cavalier, 1580-1631, married Catherine Latac, died 1632. Their eldest son, Abbe Jean Cavalier, a Sapulcian priest. The younger Jean Cavalier, 1612 to 1666, married Catherine Gist at St. Herbland Parish, Rouen, France. And they were involved with the Jesuits. We see here the name René Robert Cavalier Sieur de la Salle, 1643-1687. Him was assassinated on an expedition into Texas, Louisiana. and was an important fur trader, explorer, and the discoverer of the Ohio Valley. Um, having uh, voyaged the St. Lawrence and the Mississippi Rivers extensively.
and the Great Lakes, too. Him was the husband of Madeleine de Robon Dallon, 1646 to 1718, the first European woman to own land in what became Ontario. Uh, her was a prisoner of the Iroquois at age 42. between the years 1687 and 1688. I see here the names of Helene Desport and Virginia Dare and Marie Gabri and Madame Barbier, the wife of Sierra de Barbier, the first European in Texas to have uh, parented, uh, fathered, and mothered the first babe in the, the whole of Texas Louisiana at that time. This, this, this is how important this woman is. Her, the, the daughter of a humble soldier of minor nobility named uh, Jacques Le Robin de Allon. René Robert Cavalier, Sir de la Salle, was, uh, or seems be the brother here, or a relation there of, of Abbe Jean Cavalier, uh, seems be maybe the nephew would be Colin Cavalier, born 1674 in Rouen, uh, an unknown sister, the wife of Nicolas Caravelle the mother of Cravel de Moranger, the name Philip Cavalier, circa 1550 to circa 1597 is also listed, but seemingly meaninglessly so. On this side, the Verso side, uh, uh, three names appear. Um, Um, it seems be they uh, they be uh, three daughters mayhaps of Catherine Levander, but no, mayhaps all three of these women are mere king's daughters of Huron County, and. It's women like these whom uh, gave birth onto those um, white Indians we've talked about. The three women here, whom are King's Daughters of Huron County, so listed be Marguerite Savoy, the wife of Jacques Mousseau, a recruit of 1653, Marie Pacro, the wife of Fiacre Ducharme, married 1659, 0613, and Marie Fayette, whom was Jean Durand, married 1661-1003. Of Marguerite Savoy married Jacques Mousseau, 1658-09-16. So, yeah, we're, we're not just white. In fact, it's rather insulting to, to call us white. I knew who the white people are. And it's not us Kanajan, and it's not our cousins, the Americans, and our brethren elsewise, elsewhere. Um, 
this tiny serial marriage shows that Michel Gerard first married Francois Anso Anseum and they had a child, a son named Joachim Gerard, who uh, married first Marie Halle, of which they had a son, Jacques Gerard, the husband of Mathurin Poor or Poirier. Now Joachim Gerard later married Jean Chaloux. Michel Chirard, second wed François de Graffard, Graffard, and first or third wed Charlotte de Snoyer Donoyer, and fathered Marie Girard. Joachim Girard and Marie Halle. Uh, also had a daughter called Barb Gerard. Her married Joseph Fournier, the brother of Agathe Fournier, the wife of Louis Gasseron, them the children of Guillaume Fournier and Francois Hébert, uh, definitely first French family. And a little bit of a further um, inquiry into the Gerard family here um, this line is just uh, uh, two ancestors Pierre Louis the third Gerard son of Pierre Louis Fille Gerard and Marguerite Tardif married Marianne Joseph Vazina the daughter of uh, Jean Letart Le and Pierre-François Vezina. Um, otherwise, the elder of this charge is Nicolas Gerard and his wife Marie-François Despain Despain, the parents of François Nicolas Gerard, the husband of Marie Modeste Madeleine Tremblay, the daughter of Dessange Bissonnet and Etienne Tremblay. Marie Louise Gerard, daughter of Marie Modeste Madeleine Tremblay, daughter of Desange Bissonnet, was the wife of Etienne Bouchard, the son of Joseph Marie Félix Bouchard and Marie Felicity Saint Jalet Pradet. Etienne Bouchard and Marie Louise Gerard were the parents of Lucrèce Bouchard, the Mother of Arthur Mich Gerard, the daughter and wife of Com Gerard, son of Alexis Gerard and Marie Just Pilot, daughter of Marie Louise Marie Marie and Felix Philemon Pilot, Alexis Gerard, the son of Francois Gerard and Madeleine Tremblay, of course, the parents of Com Gerard father of Arthemis Gerard in my direct ascendancy or ascendancy wherewith it depends on how you look at it. Eh? Look at this little brick. It's nothing, is it? Five names. Acadia. Jean-Denis Salle de Salle. Husband of Francois Arnaud were the parents of Marie Mingouet Lasalle, the wife of Martin Dominique O'Coin, the parents of Madeleine Michelle O'Coin, whom was the wife of Lieutenant Governor of Acadia Michelle Boutereau Boutereau. So again we're talking about pirates as Acadia and uh, uh, Maine, Massachusetts, hey Boston, uh, they would go back and forth pirating each other. <laughs> Chris, we don't ever get teach that kind of shit, do we? The principal on this page is Jehan II Boucher of a noble family in Paris whom owned part of a house in Bress Rue de Tepper. Him was the son 
uh, Johann Boucher, born about 1450 at Saint-Malo, Ile Vilain, uh, Bretagne, France, the son of Jean Boucher, 1430 to 1530. The mother of Jean II Boucher, son of Jean Boucher, was Marie Serge, the daughter of Ole Serre, born 1395. Marie Serre was uh, died 1540, about the age of 87, in Paris. Johann Boucher was living in Geneva in 1567. Him, the son of Jehan the second Boucher of a noble family in Paris, who owned part of a house in Bres, Rue de Torpy, uh, had been born about 1495, Pas Ile de France, France. He first married Jean Fournier, the daughter of Catherine Huot, aka Huot, whom died in 1507 in France. Her, the wife, of Guillaume Fournier, um, whom was a tax collector, uh, receiver de tels de aides, election of compagnie. So he had a job and got paid in coin, which was not something most folk did uh, back then. Uh, most folk uh, uh, being supplied for by their feudal lords or their uh, signiers or whatnot. Freedom then was as freedom will become. Because that's just the way it is now. Uh, we see here a few of the children listed for uh, Jan Boucher and uh, Jan Fournier. The son Jean Fournier was born in Paris, 1537. A daughter Francois, a daughter Genevieve, and a son Antoine. We see a son David born of his second marriage to Jean Breton. The um, girl who had been previously married to Godfrey Berenguin and later married to Nicholas Lollier. Now, the Lollier, the Hallier family um, is seemingly just another French name, but uh, no, it, it, it's an important name in that um, uh, we'd call them the upper class, I guess. On this page, it's just some scribbles, some notes to myself. I'll read them just because it's curious. Uh, Hessian, mercenary from Germany to Quebec uh, at the St. Lawrence. His name was George Ignace Ziliac Lessard Lerd. Uh, so that is C. Gogo. An important fur trader, Mali Felix Un Tuen, last of the Christianized Hurons of the Bear Clan. Natig Awan Anton, Edward Harrison of the Northwest Company and the XY Company, another fur company. Him from New England. England was an explorer and a fur trapper or a fur trader. Honorable Francois Bruno of Saint Boniface. Uh, Jean Baptiste La Prairie de la Jemadie. The Husbands of Marguerite Harrison and Marie Harrison, the daughters of Edward Harrison, the 
Marguerite Leroc of the Blackfoot Confederacy, André Carrier of Voyageur, Marcel Comtois Roy, who was on the firing squad associated with shooting Orangeman Thomas Scott. On this verso side, we see how now this is what I would call a blockchain relationship as opposed to a cluster marriage. So I, I may keep using that term blockchain, but we'll see. Here we see the children of Simard and Bouchard and Tremblay all intermarried together. In fact, especially so of, well, we'll read through them. Madeleine, Marie Madeleine Roussin, the daughter of Madeleine Peradis and Nicholas Roussin. Madeleine Peradis was a child bride age 14, married to a man 32. Her the first wife of Pierre Tremblay, who then wed Marie Madeleine Simard, the sister of Marguerite Simard, the wife of Francois Bouchard, the younger brother of Genevieve Bouchard, who married Michel Tremblay. We also see Etienne Simard married to Rosalie Bouchard a sister of Francois and Genevieve, and their brother was Antoine Bouchard who married Marie Madeleine Simard. And that is what it means to be Quebecois. It, it, it's, uh, if you've ever dug up a giant tree, you'll see how interconnected those tiny little roots can get. Now on closing, I reckon, uh, I may have just thrown this out, you know, I, I had basically just grabbed the first scrap of paper to make a note, and this be it. Um, we'll begin. We'll begin in Scotland. John McLean MacDonald of unknown origins was the father of Alexander McLean MacDonald Laird, the father of Florence MacDonald of Ardnam Urchin. Her, the mother of Ranald Bain MacDonald, of Clan Ranald, the husband of Catherine McIntosh, the daughter of Lachlan of Genvoivi. Children listed of Ranald Bain MacDonald, of Clan Ranald, and Catherine McIntosh include John and Angus and Agnes, the wife of Robert Robertson of Struan, all the younger siblings of Dougal MacDonald, sixth of Clan Ranald, second Moidan. Right down here we see his son is Lachlan MacDonald, the father of Angus MacDonald, the father of Angus Dow MacDonald, the father of Hugh MacDonald, the husband of Mary, 
the parents of Lachlan McDonald McDonald, husband of Anne, the parents of Mary McDonald of Scotland, born about 1730, the wife of Inverness Donald Banmore McGillis, or Donald Banmore McGillis of Inverner, Inverners. So them be my ancestors for sure. We've talked much of Big Fair. Him the son of John Donald McGillis, uh, born 1698 in the Highland Wilderness, died 1766. The son of Alistair McGillis Jr., born 1660. The son of Alistair McGillis Sr., born 1635 in Scotland. Now, my ancestor was Northwest Company trader Angus Giroux de McGillis, the husband of Marguerite Nantin Cabin uh, La Vente Boot. Him was the third son of Donald Banmore McGillis and Mary MacDonald of Scotland, uh, them being United Empire Loyalists, whom had to leave the New Jersey, New York area after the Connecticut area, Maine, uh, and uh, go to Ontario, and then westwards. Now, their children were John G. McGillis of Nova Scotia, Hugh Laird McGillis, uh, Ronald Duncan, and Hugh. Only Ronald and Duncan left uh, uh, heritage, left, left, left lineage. We know that Alexander McGillis did uh, Giroux, and Marie McGillis, Marie Marguerite McGillis, Marie Margaret McGillis, um, were the children of Angus Giroux de McGillis and Marguerite not in Cabin Levent Boot. Angus McGillis did Giroux, my ancestor was the older brother of Marie Marguerite McGillis, the wife of Cuthbert Grant Jr., the son of Cuthbert Grant, Capitaine General of all the half-breeds Warden of the Plains, Saint Francois Xavier in, in Manitoba, or what, in Red River Settlement. Him, the son of Marguerite Marie Utnawesis, Zongabo Kichita of Quapel, her born 17 there, 55. So, we see that very important uh, First Nations line that I spend a lot of time talking about and enjoy talking about. Another little family unit here that has a star is the family of uh, Jean Baptiste Griot de la Vallée de la Petite Jean of the Carignan Solier, a soldat de la Saint-Cures, and his wife Marguerite Toussaint of Fideroy, their son France, their daughter Francois Griot de la Vallée was the wife of Marc Antoine Haas. Their son was Marc Antoine Haas. Millet Beauchamin, who married Louise Urso Lagarce, the daughter of Louise Marguerite Lefebvre, the daughter of Genevieve Marie Trottier, the wife of Michel Cicere, Lefebvre de la Cicere, a Métis. And we'll look into that further, eh? Because uh, a Métis uh, in uh, the Quebec lineage is an interesting thing to see back in that era of time. Uh, Antoine Millet, the son of Marc Antoine Haas Millet Beauchamin and Louise Ursu Le Gros, married Marie Josephette Le Vallée. Her uh, descendant of uh, Jean Baptiste Petit uh, Guillaume de Le Vallée and Marie Marguerite Dusson. André Millet de Beauchamin, the son of Antoine Millet, the son of Marc Antoine Huss, Millet Beauchamin, the son of Marc Antoine Huss, etc., first married uh, Madeleine Ducharme. 
and there's an arrow pointing over saying C. So we will, in moments, we will now look at Marianne Bellet Dight Beauchamin, the daughter of uh, Charlotte Peltier and André Millet de Beauchamin. Charlotte Peltier, the daughter of Marguerite Carbo, whom died 1852 in Pembina, having been born 1752 in Pembina. Her, the wife of Antoine Peltier, the son of Pierre Jean Peltier, 1705 to 1788, and Marguerite Madeleine Lecourt, 1718 to 1795, Ara Pentagonie. Now, their parents are unknown, as are the parents of uh, Marie Marguerite Carbo, who was born in Pembina. Yet, um, you know, these people bring to mind uh, wilderness folk wearing tricorner hats and having buckles on their shoes or whatnot. Marianne Millet Dite Beauchemin was the wife of Louis Comtois de Morin. One other family to look at on this page, and methinks this be the end of our discussion today. I hope you've enjoyed it, I have. Um, <coughs> three First Nations women are, are marked hereupon in red ink. Several families um, have extended ancestry in Quebec, beginning with Pierre Perranto and Marie-Louise Lefebvre, whom were the parents of Joseph Victor Perranto born 1776 in Montreal. Uh, him died about 1822 in Saskatchewan. Now he was an MLA and had been present for the Convention of 40 and the Convention of 24 and uh, was the first president of the newly created uh, province of Manitoba. Methink. I'll have to want to double check that, I'm sure, eh? His wife was Suzanne Swanpool Makirkon, a Chris or a Cree India woman. So that brings to mind York Factory, Hudson's Bay Territory. Their son was Joseph Dodet Parento. A daughter, Marie Parento, married Benjamin Millet de Beauchemin, brother of André Millet de Beauchemin, whom wed Genevieve Delorme, and we'll talk of her in moments. The other child listed here of Joseph Victor Parento and Suzanne uh, Swampu Macigon. I see here it's a Swampy Macigon. Indian Suzanne. The mother of Pierre Perrich Parento, 1817, died 1893 at Petoche. Him was Capitaine of the Metis in 1871. Uh, he further participated in the convention of uh, 1864 and the convention of 40 in 1870. Excuse me, the convention of 1869 and uh, the convention of 40 in 1870, more so 
he, he was um, the best shot of the Exovedes, the Buffalo Hunters, and was one of the 16 men on the Exovede Council uh, with Riala Patosh. So, also in the prisoner photo, Pierre Perriche Parento, whom wed uh, first Joseph Fett Delorme and then later Genevieve Delorme. Genevieve Delorme was the daughter of Bridget Plouffe Dite Villebrun, her born about 1805 in the Northwest Territories and died 1888 at uh, St. Norbert Red River Settlement. Her was the daughter of Marianne Zizewu Gigwig of the Sato Nation of Kole, the Snare Tribe. And she died 1850, La Berrier, Winnipeg, Manitoba. Now, we haven't talked much before of the Kode or the uh, Snare Tribe. And we won't at this time. Time is short. We're running late. Her husband was Louis Villebrun, born 1780, died 1845 in Manitoba. Him, the son, uh, Marie-Louise Parmentier de Lyonnais, 1744 to 1832 at Nicolet. And Nicolet Simon, excuse me, Simon Provencher de Villebranfi, born 1740 in Nicolet, died in Nicolet. Now, um, I'm happy to have encountered uh, Miss Marianne Zizewig because uh, she is a grandmother to me. Genevieve Delorme was the wife of André Millet de Pochamin, but she was the, son, the daughter of Joseph Enog de Delorme, born 1797, Boucherville. Died, he died 1869 in St. Norbert, the Red River Settlement. Him the son of Jean-Baptiste Enog de Delorme, Henault. Born 16, 1763, Berthier, Quebec. And Joseph Enoch de Delorme was the son of Marie Elizabeth Page. 1767, Quebec to 1819. Her was the daughter of Marie Angelique Prue. Born 1731, in Canada, dying 1785 in Berthier, Quebec. The wife of Alexander Page, born 1728 Newville, Quebec, died 1796. And scratched out here was a connection to the Riel family, so um, Jean Baptiste Henault de Delorme Henault was the son of Joseph Marie Henault de Delorme, 1724 to 1786, and his wife and his mother was uh, the wife of Jean Baptiste Henault de Delorme. Henault was Marie Emma Latour. Latour. So, There is one other Indian lady named here that we did not mention yet. Catherine Sato of uh, the Ojibwe and or Chippewa. The wife of Pierre Ducharme, born 1776, were the parents of uh, Madeline Ducharme, who was born about 1780 in Rupert's Land. Now that name is circled, but uh, There's, there's a bit of confusion to it. Other names mentioned here are Antoine Francois Van Del Père, the husband of Isabelle Beauchemin, the daughter of Marie Parenteau and Beau Benjamin Millet Beauchemin, 
and Marguerite Peranto, the uh, daughter of uh, André Millet de Beauchemin and Josephette Delorme. No, that's wrong. That's wrong. I don't know. I'm sorry I said that. I might just cut that out. God bless you, one and all.